Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final here for Spring 2019 LCK. I'm still Atlas. This is still Papa Smithy and LS. And game number one felt like it was almost the end of the series. It was so incredibly hype, but we could still have four more games, potentially. And it just felt like cat and mouse with this comp that Griffin were running. It became very clear after the mid game, they needed to avoid 5v5s. And they were very good at doing that. They got some big leads and yet, it only took one from SKT and the game ended pretty summarily. Now I think we're all left with the same question of, why this trick from Griffin? Is it just, we love this strategy, if it wins in game number one, it gets us big draft advantages? Or are they gonna go off meta the entire series and not take SKT on 5v5? I mean, that would be potentially disastrous, right? What happens here if in game number two, you and I were just talking about this, what if they pull out Sonataric and then they lose with it and then they tilt in game three? Because they, they came into it with two cheese strategies, tried to utilize well, we know them. about one. We know about one. And then if they both don't work. Now, it felt like to me, though, in that game, Chovy was looking phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In that game. Tarzan was on point. Yeah, and Sword, Sword even played Sword very well. Sword was even playing very well. But the team composition had a goal. It had a need. It has a necessity to get ahead. They didn't manage to do it enough. And then it fell back on top of them. And let me tell you guys about a team that would reach a point in the game and then couldn't lose a 5v5 to almost anyone. That's actually Griffin. Yeah. Griffin were the team yeah. who were the team fight gods, especially this season. Remember that Hanwha Life fight back out of oh, nowhere, yeah. the Viper Pentakill. That was this season, and yet they were the ones avoiding the fights. I want to see them go standard coming into game number two. I want to see them at least have some late game win conditions, right? Because it felt like game number one was a tightrope walk the entire mid to late For game. everyone, for the players, yeah. for us, we were all on the edge of our seats. Exactly. It was never enough until SKT's Nexus exploded. Yeah, it's actually a, a big problem because we've got so many incredibly hyped up SKT fans in the audience right now, and they could have been having heart attacks as Pick and Ban is now upon us for game number two. We'll see what adjustments are going to be made as we'll find out exactly what the side selections will be. SKT will slide over to the blue side. And we'll see if the bans for Griffin are going to be more standard or if they're going to try to target SK Telecom here. And as SK Telecom have anything up their sleeve. Now with Griffin on red, that's typically the color for Sonatarix. So SKT choose blue side, so we get that side selection change. Griffin's bands ended up being a read on what they wanted to play rather than the meta. So what happens in game number two? Because for now, we're going tier list. Remember that Griffin were targeting to try to get the Talia Pantheon off the ground with the Tom Kench Morgana bands. Are they targeting again? Because first pick for SKT, it could be something bread and butter like a Jace or a Rek'Sai, but it doesn't have to be. And game number one's bans were definitely, no one who was prepping for this series got all six out of six. Oh, heck no. The Jace is going to be banned again though. Griffin needs to ban that one away from Khan. They did it on the blue side in game number one, did it on the red side in game number two. But the interesting change up here is the fact that the oh. Morgana has been banned on Lissandra. blue side twice in a row. Corky going to be banned away. That's a couple of, uh, that's in fact three Lissandra counters now on the bench. Yeah, so all three Lissandra counters are now on the bench. Does Chovy have something else up his sleeve? We saw his willingness to play Scion into it. You know another champion that does well into it right now? Nautilus. Oh, ho, ho. We haven't seen it yet. And it's not, it's a note button for Akali, but it doesn't have to be. You can still wow. run Akali and weather what is a awkward laning phase, but our thought was that Griffin wanted to get the 2v2 lead Ooh. from jungle and the mid lane. So actually, given everything, SKT might be surprised to see Lissandra first rounded by Griffin. They've dropped priority on that champion pretty far, and they don't end up getting Galio and the Lissandra. And I like what they end up doing. They pick the Galio, which can actually dissuade Sonatarik. We talked about that earlier on in the broadcast. He's the best support against it down in the bottom lane. And there's so many combos. You mentioned that earlier on, Papa. There's Jarvan available. Here he comes, Definitely. potentially. And the Lissandra, yes, they gave it away, but maybe it was a bluff. And also, they're pretty happy to strap Galio into the mid lane and farm out against Lissandra, who's much yeah. more about 2v2 than it is about 1v1, right? It's very much pushing for a later part of the game or a teleport flank. So I like the cut of your jib there, Alas. I think you have a good point about the fact that Galio gives away the least, but oh. we get the confirmation pretty fast. 
Baker just says, screw it. I'm going to actually be lane dominant against Lissandra at a point and try to just blow him up on this Azir. Excited to see what kind of variant of the Azir he's going to go with as well. We saw Hail of Blades most recently from Pawn here in the LCK. We've seen Lethal Tempo come out around the world. Could we see Sword flex Lissandra top? Because it's a non-interactive champion that could push. You don't have to play wow. it in mid lane, but we think we know of it as a mid lane Lissandra versus Azir matchup. We'll get back to that point later. Griffin, they're actually going to rip away the Ezreal that Teddy's had so many amazing performances on and try to outrange the threat wombo combo of SKT. And I really like that. They had option between Ezreal and Lucian, two of the most dominant AD carry champions in Korea throughout Spring 2019. They opted for the Ezreal. What that tells me is that they're not going to try to go super aggressive and put the Azir in the ground and the SKT comp and try to fight it fire with fire. And instead, I think that we're going to see Griffin recalibrate their draft into a more mid-range, late-game scaling type of team comp. And I want to point out something fun. You and I were discussing how Griffin win games, and I'm a big proponent of the 2v2 mid-jungle. Notice no jungler taken first round by Griffin. Yep. No Rek'Sai, no Lee Sin, these high-tier picks. If that doesn't happen, we very often see them hold jungle to last pick. There's no guarantee, because they're probably considering at least Lissandra flex to top side. Had a chance to pop over to Sword Solo queue, no Lissandra games, but doesn't mean he's not playing it. You could just go for a power jungle like Elise. Something will be available. Kindred is something Tarzan has played before. But the Evelyn that you're never completely yeah. discounting could be that big last pick for Griffin. Well, I'll talk about Evelyn a little bit. She doesn't really like Galio. No. I'll tell you that much. She, or AoE uh, crowd control in general. Yeah, AoE crowd control in general. I will say, though, that other unorthodox pick that we talked about, maybe Tarzan could pull out the Karthus. So it feels like we talk about him quite often in the LCK sometimes. <laughs> we? Not that great <laughs> with the Ezreal and the Lissandra. That's quite too much magic damage. And it wasn't Tarzan's reason they lost game one. Good smites. Right. He had a good jungling phase on the Olaf. They'll take Olaf anyway, so they're going to be very happy about the jungling matchup. Might have to flash out of a Cataclysm, but otherwise we'll be fine. The result is you can theoretically hold that sword new pick or potential flex of the Lissandra to final pick does mean no Evelyn this time out. And also means that Teddy's able to pick up his Lucian pretty comfortably here for the bottom side of the map. You mentioned Lucian Gallio, a little bit of early power down there. SKT were weathering the storm in the bottom lane in game number one on exactly what Griffin have built up for themselves in uh, this particular game. And they're going to have a whole lot more firepower this time around as Faker would most likely be going to, into Khan's hands if the oh. Akali's locked in, and it is going to be locked here. Not a lot of tanky boys here on this SKT roster right now. And another reason you might want to flex the Lissandra top side. So this is really interesting. They, basically, he's saying Swords champion pool ranges tanks. Akali will farm out against a tank. How's this going to go? This is really interesting. One thing that's really, really rare, I've seen it from some of the LPL teams in scrims, oh, wow. is top Azir. And oh. so I don't know if that could end up happening here, but it's most likely just going to be the Akali. You said and the words top that, Ariana seriously I, I, I said that a lot. <laughs> so could have been, could've been met to bit. answer the Lissandra, but not going to be the case. Hecarim going to come in here now for Sword. And so SK Telecom with quite an aggressive team composition. However, Griffin have built themselves a very different comp this time around. This is much more standard. This will have the ability to play things out in the late game, has some good bridges in the early to mid game as well, with Lissandra being able to hold onto her lane pretty effectively and the Olaf being able to jungle relatively fast. So I must admit I was squinting till 20 seconds because I didn't want to live in a world where LS was right about <laughs> top lane Azir. <laughs> top lane Azir, top lane Ori. Leave that off my broadcast, LS. I've got nothing left. But at the end of this one... He got the Avengers bottom lane he in did game get the number Avengers one. Bottom. He can't that have one, everything. That one I like. Yeah. But at the end result of this... We end up seeing the Hecarim answer. Hecarim has some interesting interactions because if you actually shroud on the corner, you can be pushed out of it, depending on the targeting timing, and actually be accountable. The Ignite can be there. I believe SKT said that Sword's champion range didn't include a pick that could dominate Akali 1v1. So that's why we saw the blind Akali. The Hecarim, yes, it's more to the tank side, but you build Trinity Force before you build any tanky items. So let's see if we see some attention topside to try to take down Akali. Yeah, see whether or not it's going to be Khan getting that attention as well. I mean, in theory, both of these uh, junglers can get things done pretty early on. And top lane does look very, very volatile, always between these two players, which is why it's so cool. They have such a good relationship. 
We're going to get into it, though. Here we are, game number two, Griffin versus SKT. The Don't you judge me for my mistakes. Take enough my chairs I can take. Still, so many Griffin fans here in the stadium. We and actually got a chant this time out. Let's yeah, we get did. One we got a second ones. chant. Thank goodness. SKT fans have been holding that one in for about an hour. So that's why this entire stadium just erupted. And we've all been holding it in ever since we saw SKT Griffin, because I think every caster became a bias caster. They want to see five <laughs> games yeah. between SKT and Griffin. Game number one was some nice table setting and the quick answer that I called for was, Griffin, bring back the standard. Much more standard a draft in game number two. Ranged 80 carries for both Teddy and Viper. Now, this time it's an aggressive invading level one from Griffin. To be fair though, they have Olaf Braum. Could you be a better level one dealer? Probably not. And the thing for Griffin with the scaling team composition, it feels like a lot of the eggs are gonna be in the Viper basket late game, but they're gonna have a lot of difficulty stabilizing, I feel, in the early into mid transition against the Lucian. Well, and SKT actually Azir. aggressively oh, moving man, into the jungle. Them. That's gonna be a double taunt landing. There from Mata, Tarzan very, very low, will go down for first one. It goes over to Khan, Mata, he's his whole health bar, and it's absolutely fine. Two kills for SKT. SKT bring five, and they get the double kill from it. Akali goes top, really nice roll of the dice, pays off, and then some. No items in the first buy, but a kill and assist towards that gun blade for Akali. And everyone gets to the lane first as well. Getting back to the lane, having the lane prio. We take another look at the replay. Griffin don't know that they're outnumbered. And so the Galio taunt, so powerful early on. Close call there on Tamada, but not quite. And I really like Chovy's discipline. He doesn't flash. And I really like the surround by SKT. Notice the Nepali seeing the Brahmanola and the early invade as we get the nice suits already in jumps from Endor Stadium. The Akali doesn't go top lane. She actually stays around in case there is actually the chance for a 5v4. So they just did their math sums and said five is a bigger number than four. Even Twitch chat knows that. And that means level one advantage, SKT. I also love the communication as well. You saw Teddy walk straight past, share pixels with Viper and not shoot him at all because they knew that they needed to get that first blood to give themselves even more of that man advantage. It didn't matter what uh, an Ezreal can do at level one because it's just not a whole lot against this Lucian. And now SKT off to an incredible start. And I think it's very different to what Griffin did in game number one, because yes, they were able to get a very early first blood pre one minute. But I think that the snowball implications on Griffin now is much more scary. And I think we should discuss an S word here, LS. Ooh, and one? that S word is scaling, because you were talking about the scaling comp on the side of Griffin. I actually look at how these fights are likely to go and I say, if Khan presses all his buttons on the Ezreal, he's going to be able to zone yeah. out Ezreal. There's actually not that much threat behind it. So I actually think Griffin needs to get going in the early mid game and might have some scaling issues. Azir, a scaling god in and of himself. Azir's now got a lane against a no flash. Uh, Lissandra, as we know, and speaking of Lissandra. Yeah, oh, Faker's going to come on over. He's only level four, but he's still got enough damage. Clit's going to help out. And Griffin lose three in the first four minutes. And that scale's gonna be so hard, LS, because now with Summoner's being down, Sword's trying to help, he's teleporting too late. It's all falling apart. Yeah, everything is just looking very tilty. Is the only way that I can actually describe it with Sword's teleport, Chobi finding himself in a really bad position. And what is the mental state of Griffin right now in this game here? As we can see that everything is going right for SKT. I'm not willing to pull out the tilt word just yet, but let's discuss something that happened. The flash is down on Chovy. He's playing this lane like he has flash. This is not respecting the level one that happened, and it's SKT doing what every jungler does in solo queue. Oh, we got a flash, return to the lane. They return to the lane, and Clint, uh, sorry, definitely Chovy at one point said, I'm gonna die if you don't TP. Sadly, it was disconnected, and by the time the TP did come, they're kind of putting themselves further into that level one hole. Yeah, and that's two deaths for Chovy now as well as he returns from base. Teleport was there, so he doesn't miss out on too much farm, only down six as we go through and have a look at those CS margins. 
Sword has done okay since heading back towards top side of the map and bot lane is also even. And one of the things that I like that Papa mentioned is that SK Telecom, they do have scaling champions on their team composition. And the thing I was alluding to is that if this goes really late, the only scaling champ that can go toe to toe against SK Telecom is going to be the Ezreal. But Akali and Azir, yeah. they have a lot more fire to work with. I think Akali goes in the back line and maybe doesn't kill Ezreal, but Ezreal ain't doing damage to other people. Meanwhile, Azir Lucian should be free hitting. So that's why I like SKT as the game goes on. And that's why the level one being so calamitous with so many summoners being down. Toby tries to return to pushing in Azir because otherwise you get harassed by the extra range on the Azir. Doesn't play to his summoner disadvantage. I have full confidence in Trophy playing this lane with summoners, but the adaptations after level one weren't there, and that's where SKT is pounds. Well, on the bottom side of the map, you were mentioning the Ezreal needing to get ahead. Well, at the moment, he's got Klepto and does have a CS advantage of about 10 as this minion wave gets cleaned up and equalized. So Gripen do have that win condition theoretically in their back pocket. SKT losing a lot as far as frontline is concerned. I feel like Hecarim and uh, Olaf are going to have more backline access given just what those champions do. But I agree with you guys, there's just so much damage potential on this SKT roster as this game goes on. And uh, Faker has taken the lethal tempo, so it has a little bit more damage potential with six items than you would if you had the Halo of Blade. And one of the things I want to talk about, about the later stage things, if this dive doesn't end up happening, is Griffin, they don't have a smoke and mirrors team comp no, no. this time around. They're going to be forced to team fight against SK Telecom. And when three of your champions want to go into SKT, the Ezreal is going to be all by himself. Oh, that's a single man taunt, but he gets stunned up. Mata has to flash to get out of the way. Justice Punch to go back in. Mata knows that he is finished, and Viper picks up the first kill for Griffin. It was so important that Tarzan part bot side to potentially stop the same damn dive that Griffin did in game number one, and has traditionally done building up the minion wave. Fortuitous that he had no other camps on the map, so he goes to the Gromp, the only one he had up. That's when Hood was umming and ahhing. You notice he was trying to pull out earlier when Mata went in and a disconnect between jungle and support. You know, Mata usually, it's Mata dandy, right? When you think you have historic yeah. <laughs> jungle supports. Here, Clid and Mata were on a kind of different page. And that's a bit of a gimme back for Griffin. And we take a look at the replay here. Clid manages to get the Grom, doesn't know about Tarzan and everything just gets turned on its head. In just a few seconds, Predator came in, Mata knew that he was dead, just tried to run off onto the side, said, leave my teammates alone. He was in that awkward spot where if Clid had engaged, regardless of the call, at least he'd have Aftershock if he went in. If he does Dust's Punch defensively, he doesn't even get to Aftershock. And yes, he was kind of done all ends up, to use a cricket analogy, as uh, yeah, we get to use that once. We've got some Aussies <laughs> on the cast. Still. Uh, he was certainly pulling the car over and, uh, and parking at that particular point in time. So, uh, Mata, no harm, no foul should still be able to keep themselves in this lane relatively comfortably. Teddy goes back, gets himself a shop, is going for the Blade of the Rune King build. We saw Def try to popularize the Essence Reaver, the three out of Spike being very powerful on the Lucian. Feels like he's more of a late game threat, not where Teddy's going to be heading this particular time around as Lahans. Moving into the mid lane, but Faker's just going to glide his way over towards his turret. It's a coverage roam, Galio's bot lane, but you're not getting a kill on Faker uh, with summoners up and uh, everything available. Top side, which we've ignored the other times, actually been CS for CS, so that's something where Akali can prey upon some melee laners, and uh, Hecarim does take kind of level 9 points into Rampage and towards the Trinity Force to trade back. No Ignite all-in timing, because Olaf's been elsewhere, so probably both sides are, you know, content with it being salvaged, and it, the Akali with the extra gold, that's just gone for Seeker's Arm Guard Rush, but also the Gunblade should be on time as well, thanks to the level 1. Sort of like getting a Seeker's Arm Guard for free, almost, by having such a great level 1 fight. Teddy throws out the cuddling. Culling? The cuddling. The cuddling. Feels a little bit like the cuddling when, when it goes straight into this, an unbreakable. Uh, illusion especially, it yeah. feels like the cuddling. <laughs> one of the best mistakes I've made, I think. His name's Teddy. It's an acceptable mistake. <laughs> well, here as we take a look at top lane, not too much plate damage actually being inflicted. Chovy, he's going to get the blue handoff, but he hasn't recalled yet. He does have teleport coming up, though. And so with this blue buff, yes, he can stay around inside of the lane, but he doesn't have the most amount of oomph inside of his punches. And he's even going to take a little bit of damage here by Faker, and maybe he's okay with this, thinking, I'm going to TP anyway. 
He's on a recall timing, so desperately trying to get a shove, and Olaf's not there to help him push out mid, so not a lot of great options for Chovy. In the mid lane, stabilized so much with the summon advantage into the secondary gank, so Azir is going to be on point when we hit the mid game with those items. Tarzan once again in position for a counter gank, but this time, even with flash down on Mata, hard to translate into something. Yeah, you can see SKT playing very defensively. They're not going to move themselves underneath the turret again. Marta learned from his previous mistake. Cloud Drake is going to be the first one. The beginning of the Drakes that aren't as useful. Uh, would that be how you'd put it, Ellis? I would call that a Clown Drake. Mm -hmm. Probably not the most useful. Although, Hecarim and Olaf are both on the team. So, so for damage the predator, scaling, actually. It's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, this actually isn't go. a Clown Drake. This is This, this is might Cloud actually just Fantasy be a seven. Cloud. Oh my goodness. Does it become a Crown Drake, then? Oh, what are we doing here? Is there, is there a name for if it's good? What if the team is the perfect team for a Cloud Drake? I don't know. You're the one with the names, LS. Come on. Well, Shelly Rivers, speaking of names, is going to be started up here by SKT. Tarzan taking some damage as he's trying to get them off it, but it looks like SKT should be able to have a monopoly of this area. Trovi moving on over, wants to take down... Tar Oh, it's stolen somehow, is Teddy? He's trying to find the teleport Jackson! Just before Viper makes his way into the fight, but can Griffin still manage to get the work done? The answer is just a straight up no. The ultimate comes through from Chosy. Trovi to get one on the back end, but you can see Faker still trying to do damage. Mata is in here with 200 health. He does have a lot of damage available there at this particular level, but Faker should be able to finish this one off. One more auto. Can he get on top of Chovy? Gets it with the final Q. Big win in the end for SKT. They get more of the kills. Not ideal to lose the Rift Herald and Tarzan gets to pick it up. But after that, with Viper just offering himself in tribute, Cull, no cuddling this time. Oh, this no. is a cuddle of death. Viper thinks he's free to go for a team fight advantage because he can teleport into a team fight. The enemy's not in. Viper sees and knows that Teddy can't cancel it, but it's too long, Viper. What are you doing? Yeah. And I also, think, he just uh, thought I think it was, he was just trying to out. get out. Yeah. yeah. Not actually trying out. to teleport into a fight. Just so happened there was a fight happening. At this point in time, we're seeing this one right now, Sword with a point-blank ultimate it's, to try and get Griffin ahead. The thing about this is that if Tarzan doesn't get the steal, this is so disastrous oh, yeah. for SK Telecom. Teddy is going to get such an experience lead and a gold advantage down into bottom. Then they would have the Herald to boot, and Griffin would be picked off like Stranglers after such a heavy commitment. And fans of five-game series, you need to see Griffin get something, salvage something from all their trades. Otherwise, you start looking at your watch and be like, ooh, the 3-0 chances go up and up. The fact that they're salvaging and finding some inroads means we're more likely for a longer series, but Griffin needs to start making mistakes like they have been too much today. Well, Tarzan's looking for Clint. Griffin's still not ready to stop fighting just yet. A couple more autos on Demata will stun him up. As Clit's fighting on with Tarzan because Faker, he's got the inside track. Another culling comes out. Not the cuddling this time. Lahens wasn't there with the door availability. Azir's first roaming on a Lissandra already yeah. tells you everything you need to know about how mid game, mid lane has gone. Oh, Toby tries the ult. He's going to get in there. Clit's going to get locked down, but the heroic entrance comes in. The bouncy castle is erected, and Faker locks down the kill on his opposite number. Make that a double as the Olaf falls. And the Cloud Drake will be taken. And Griffin with a really bizarre trade choice. Chovy handshaking that by trying to lock up Clint, but Tarzan was not in close enough proximity. And SK Telecom, they just told Griffin to straighten up. It's yep. an item lead, it's a Rome first lead with the Galio. It's just Chovy just being kind of absent of the game state and making a very poor decision. They're going to lose a lot for this. Teleport's being invested, I believe. Sword. Sword, yeah, coming in, the only teleport remaining to try to wave clear. Second defensive teleport around mid lane for the Hecarim in a skill matchup. And more respite now for the Akali, who I think is building some odd items. But let's have a look at this fight once again. I mean, it was just knock up city right there for the Lissandra at the end. But I have to wonder what Chovy is actually thinking with the proximity away from the Olaf as well as Mata having the grand entrance on Galio. It's a very peculiar loss of thought, it seems like. Ends up resulting in a double kill for SKT. Well, we'll see whether this results in a kill as Khan trying to run away from Sword, and we'll do so effectively. With the backflip on the Shuriken, I told a lie. Not interesting items at all. It's exactly what an Akali's going to build most of the time. Has a stopwatch that's broken at this point 
in the game though, and that Zonius is going to be quite some ways away after the Gunblade. And we're learning item break points in the Hecarim versus Sakali matchup. A bit of pieces from both. Find some way to jam this Rift Herald, but it's not pre-14 minutes, and it's somewhere where SKT can start to reinforce. Here comes Baker, but he'll be late. Yeah, going to be a little bit late. Ring of Flush does come in as Jovi doesn't get knocked up. Aftershock wears off now. Clint takes a lot of damage. Khan as well, but Baker, he wants the fight. He's, he's got the Empress to divide. Oh, he's not. No, yeah. not going to be able to get in there just yet. Not enough vision available, and they had to deal with Shelly. I saw a flash up, but I wondered if we would yeah. see one of those Azir Sec plays in this finals arena. Griffin have chosen to stay, notice. Yep. Griffin are looking a little bit panicked, maybe, going for these very high-risk, high-reward plays, and it's just not panning out. They rotated their bottom lane into mid to try to cover up for the fact that Chobi was on a roam, but they didn't find anything with the play that was pretty committing for a rotation. The thing that's really scary, guys, is I'm looking at this, and... You saw, I don't know whether you guys saw on, uh, sorry, you guys at home saw on Twitter that all of the coaches did do their predictions. Most people saying SKT. In fact, there was only one Hanwha Life, uh, their coach that predicted it would be Griffin and Darmon Gaming predicted that they didn't know, basically. Everybody else said SKT. And it, they said it was gonna be because of this jungle mid lane synergy. You guys mentioned it already before game number one, once again before game number two, and it's happening again. Now in game number three, Faker and Clid are demolishing Griffin. Well, Faker's having uh, his own basketball in this mid lane, just auto attacking away. He's been under no threat ever since the flash was used at level one. What a costly level one that proved to be for Griffin. And it's, it's really what you focus on, Atlas, because again, the Origin G2 series where recently Origin had played way better than G2. Yeah. So go for recency. Well, now everyone laughs and says recency bias. This feels more like recency, Griffin tripping. Uh, over their shoelaces against Afrika and Gen G, also losing to King Zone. The Dras that you shook your head and said, well, they didn't have much to play for. They got oh. everything to play for. The Dras have had some merit, but the players let them down in game number two, and the draft from game one had a timer they couldn't respect. And one of the things here for me is that this is only going to get worse now for Griffin. We're at a stage of the game where they are supposed to be ahead. They're the ones that would like to be in the driver's seat. And so now everything is going to boil down to Viper inside of the team fights on the Ezreal. And can he somehow be a god and manage to survive and weather the storm inside of the team fights? Or is Khan and Faker just gonna get easy access to him? Well, Khan, maybe overextended just a little bit, but actually, that is not going to be the case. Just gonna trade back some Qs and some autos with Sword, who goes down to half health. Still looking for more, maybe thinks that Tarzan's a little bit closer than he is, because Khan is just ripping him to shreds. Yeah, the Gunblade is done, so the happy times for trading with an Akali are gone. Sword still has a lot of threat, here we go. Yep, Softball Onslaught is going to come forward. Uh, I think he missed Onslaught his of e. Shadows, in fact, as uh, Khan did manage to backflip to the right point, I believe, in order to get the fear in the right direction. Second charge of the ultimate does come in. Yeah, the precise interaction would need to slow it down, very but he got away from it. That's flexing. the most important thing. That's another all-in attempt that hasn't gone their way. If you're wondering how Griffin was supposed to play, it's an Olaf drop. We always talk about those tempo drafts where you're ahead on the map. Remember, they want to be ahead with teleports as Chovy is using everything defensively. And all these teleports, this three teleport advantage has actually got Griffin more deaths, not kills. Exactly, now Khan is happily 1v2ing underneath this turret. Faker is oh, going boy. 1v1 so easily. And what does that mean, guys? There's just more players on the map for SKT. They'll take down the Atatara bottom lane. They'll even be able to start, start up the second Cloud Drake. It's going from easy to easier for these guys. Yeah, and Griffin really look like they're falling apart here as the mid-game transition has commenced. They're going to go for this roam one more time, but the minion wave just evaporates. This is about as all-in as he can get as Chovy gets over to the side. The flash does come in from Khan, stays out of vision, but it doesn't matter when it's Alessandro. Baroque entrance comes forward, Khan still alive for so long. Gunblade comes in, and he's in tower range, Khan, the god! Khan's able to clean it up, Mata in position as well. It's all too obvious. They're getting an all-you-can-eat buffet on Griffin. Every single objective you know going their way. Fake is talking about. It wasn't tilt it's before. Now. It's definitely tilt now. Yeah, this is definitely tilt. That looks like a very good Lissandra claw, but just not able to pick up the kill. Look at that beautiful max range play. 
The ultimate came in, but it didn't matter as Khan already got the flash away. He got into proximity for the grand entrance. Chovy missing his skill shot as well. That was some fancy footwork from Khan. So I don't know whether you necessarily call it missing or just juking. <laughs> And some fans at home will ask, why is that obvious? Why did he start moving away from the turret? Why is Olaf still in the lane, yeah. melee auto attacking a turret as the minion wave is dying? And Only makes sense if the mid lane is roaming. So that's the math that Khan did in his head. That's why he didn't take an extra 300 damage thrown out from an axe or some other spells, an ignite even from sword where it's still available. That's how he knew to kite back and kite back to a benefit as Sword is uh, pretty overextended, but can ult away. Yeah, Onslaught of Shadows is going to help him here. Clit's still chasing after the horse. The teleport comes in. No CC necessary because the best CC is death. I'm gonna hope that he thought he was igniting someone, but uh, <laughs> these teleports, take less of them. Get some combat summoners in there. The teleports aren't working. Yeah, he went with F for fire, but he, he wasn't supposed to, I think. We oh don't dear. quite understand what exactly is happening right now with the teleports for Griffin. But Infernal Drake, it's coming up in just over two and a half minutes now. They're definitely not likely to be in a position to contest that. And so SK Telecom with two Cloud Drakes, what's likely to be an Infernal and the Akali in Azir being absolutely massive at this stage of the game. This was the story in game number one. Well, what needs to happen for Griffin to make those eight out of a hundred times come true? They're on eight this time. <laughs> it's not eight, nope. it's probably about two. It's and gonna be really rough. Those Baron are... Steel, Elder Steel, there and, you go. I and have here's them. the thing, LS, those two are not Griffin doing things. They're kind of asterisk mistake plays from SKT. It feels like any way where Griffin controls their agency, they are probably in a really, really awful spot here. Two item spikes done on everyone. It's great scaling inside of SKT. Faker being a bit bold, but he's been able to play, like we said, with his own basketball. He's not sharing with anyone today. Nope. If he was in a playground, the kindergarten teacher would not be happy. He'd definitely be the ball hog. But everyone else is so strong, and Jarvan, with all of his kills, it's not usually ideal for a Cinder Hulk Jarvan to have four kills out of the 10. He's gone for the, I'm gonna turret dive everyone build. And you know what? He'll last a while. Yeah, he's probably pretty happy to turret dive everyone at this point in time. Right now, he's in the enemy jungle. They've got a heck of a lot of vision down there on the bottom side of the map. Griffin will be able to clear out this control ward most likely as Lehens gets himself into the pit and does so. So Baron Vision is there for Griffin. They're gonna make a play. It might need to be around Tarzan and his smites because that has been the best news story here for Griffin so far tonight. Well. Here now with Infernal coming up in just over a minute. Griffin, they're gonna try to get as much gold as they possibly can. Really interesting itemization choice coming out here for Viper though. Maybe he can get to Blade of the Ruin King before that next team fight. But talking about Baron for Griffin, they don't have the best Baron taking potential. They have good turn off the Baron, but their actual Baron damage is very, very weak. Play the Ruin King has capped damage, but it obviously helps the Ezreal have some sort of threat. Everyone else, we're not going to see Hecarim just helicoptering his Qs and auto attacking. It's not really going to happen, so definitely take your point, LS. And it's also situational tanks with health and redemption and magic resist trying to turn against an item lead SKT with an Azir who literally has nothing to worry about in the back line. His flash and cleanse have never been used this game. He's just been having a, a really happy time, so getting control, face checks, look at this. Yeah, that's the calling. Cataclysm comes out from Clid there as well as Tarzan does get out. Redemption comes in, keeps him topped up. But that's a horse that can't go anywhere near a Baron right now. Sorry, Lehens that can't go anywhere near a Baron right now, but both of them are going, going to be backing. SKT not going to start it up. They're going to play this one. Pretty cool, calm and collected because they wanted to use Khan to grab themselves an Infernal Drake because of that scaling that we discussed, and especially the gold lead. Just like game number one, there are no propositions where five people run at five that Griffin are gonna be favorites. So if they decide as a team they want Infernal, you say thank you very much, sir, enjoy your Infernal. Yep. And the Infernal comes in, and of course another Infernal comes in behind. I believe that Akali just got almost two long swords and a blasting wand in terms of value from the stat amplification as I was looking at her icon at the bottom left. That's really scary off of an Infernal yeah. Dragon. Can you imagine what Azir is getting in terms of value? For fans of a competitive series, I hope you're wrong, is all <laughs> I'm gonna say, because uh, that sounds like a lot, LS. I'll give you the 
benefit of the doubt on that one. Griffin just can't hold a position on the map. You talked about how a Baron Seal, which again is usually a misplay by the team that's ahead, in this case SKT, rather than a great play by Griffin, requires some semblance of control of their red side jungle. They're struggling even getting the first part going. The wards on things like red buff are looking conditional at best. Well, zombie wards are going to get cleared out here. Justice Punch gets Marta back towards this Baron Pit. There is a control ward there, but Flag and Drag will get cleared into the Baron Pit. And SKT. They'll play it by the numbers. They are so good at this. It doesn't matter how much pressure this team has on them. Historically, in playoffs matches like this, it's been a while because 2018 wasn't SKT's year. But this squad is so good at keeping level-headed. And I think it has a lot to do with the coaching staff, with people like Koma just standing at the back, able to tell them that it's all going to be OK. And most of the time, guys, it is. Well, in this game, Griffin, they're trying to posture for vision right now around their red side jungle. But the slightest mistake could mean SK Telecom well, gets back. could this be it? Double knockups are going to come in. The taunted land redemption comes forward. That does a bit of damage. Thankfully, Stand Behind Me exists. There was someone in place to get lands out of there. Marta still looking for it, but Tarzan, oh. he has to flash. Ragnarok, not enough at all. Holds onto that one, but that's a big button now unavailable and SKT even get themselves in in a turret. At some point, Occam's Razor says that Teddy heard what you said about the cuddling, took exception, <laughs> and is now just trying to kill everyone. Where they stand, Griffin though, they're trying to outnumber a Faker. Yeah, should be able to get a knock up here. Okay, jumps through the wall with the onslaught of shadows, but heroic entrance comes down, they don't have enough damage, as Faker, he's even still alive, stands among three, straight up doesn't care, shifting sands, gets him the shield, he even takes down the horse himself. SKT, they grab a couple of kills, and it just looks like Griffin are too far behind. And Faker said to take that Tro Trojan horse elsewhere as he raised the Sharima passive and turned the whole fight. And it's looking like SK Telecom, they have their pick of the litter right now. Tarzan's still alive, so they don't want to start the Baron on the off chance something goes disastrous, <laughs> because that would likely be the only way Griffin has a chance back in. Two minutes until the Elder. Now, this is too respectful, if not for another point, but I'll get to it after the replay. Faker, of course, does his best Phoenix impression here. He sees enemies and he says, I'm going to have a Sharima turret, a Gargoyle, and a Dream. And his Dream, you know what? His yeah. Dream was fulfilled. By the end, the team is able to collapse through here. The rest of this play is whatever, so I want to focus on, remember Griffin have lots of teleports? So if you don't actually kill the Baron before the teleports come in, suddenly it gets really confusing trying to finish this Baron and peel correctly and target select. Usually, if multiple people are dead and Olaf has flashed, this Baron is free. Azir is three items, but SKT respect the teleports and say, this is our game to lose. We have the scaling advantage. Let's not take this risk now. Well, they didn't. Baron is still there, as you can see, 28 minutes into this game. Infernal Drake is going to be up in one minute's time. We'll see whether they wait to try and get an earlier Infernal Drake, uh, sorry, Elder Drake. I know this is something that you talk about a lot, LS. On the broadcast is timing your Drakes to make sure you get either an extra one if you want to, extend that one out, or get the Elder Drake as soon as possible. I feel like SKT probably want to fight over an Elder as fast as they can. Yeah, and so do they wait until the 30 minute mark to consume the Infernal Dragon? Or do they just see it right away and allow something else to end up spawning? Maybe get another one. Maybe get another one. one. I would say, with how this game was supposed to go, the idea of delaying has some merit. I don't think Griffin can fight for two objectives, and I think you get no, whichever one so you really either. want. So, go for bonus. Here Whoa, we go. there's the flash. Big taunt coming out from Mata to start this one off. Lahan throws the ultimate back towards Teddy, but it doesn't interrupt the culling. It's not the culling anymore. Chobi trying to stand the back line, but he just does no damage. Sword is too late to the fight. As he jumps in, he just gets taunted. Baker sweeps the floor, and Griffin members die. The Ragnarok's not going to be enough. Viper can't run fast enough. And Griffin, I think you're done this time around. Khan's found Tarzan, and he's just playing with his food. Cleans him up. That's another kill to SKT. Another one. They're pushing through mid lane. They want to go home early. Yeah, exactly. We've got four minions here. SKT, they can tank up turrets if they want to. Maybe not Marta, as Viper still does some damage. But look at these turrets melt. The this Nexus is it. will follow, and SK Telecom will move to match point in the final of LCK Spring 2019. And SK Telecom with an extremely decisive victory, saying that they want to take it all the way. 
as they just charge right down the Nexus. Viper not able to do anything. And Tarzan, he was just getting danced on by Khan. Really? Just Tarzan? I think the whole lineup here was getting danced on a little bit. The level one Griffin tried with Olaf and Braum was red. SKT was ahead of that play. And then from there, it all fell into place. Gank the overextend in the Sandra, who can't lane as aggressively against Azir without that summoner. Profit here and there. And sadly, for fans of a competitive series, we saw Griffin use teleports very freely. They had a multiple global strategy about outnumbering around the map, but they were actually just outnumbering to their doom and peril again and again. We said, Griffin, make it honest, make it a standard draft. Now we run out of advice and we just say, Griffin, show us something new. Because what you're doing tonight, we're less than two hours in. It's not working. Exactly, and they tried to go back to what they were used to, what was winning earlier on in the split when they were on such an incredible streak. And SKT just said, we don't care. We play the best standard League of Legends in the LCK right now. We'll show you exactly how that one's supposed to work. And it did. Yes, I mean, the level one went against them, but otherwise, it's just outplayed. The SK Telecom super team is really living up to not only the notion of what a super team is, but what everyone expected of them coming into this split. They just kept ramping up, and as Atlas just said, they play the best standard League of Legends. No smoke and mirrors necessary for this team. In Korea, KT Rolster 2017 was the super team, and that was very quickly an ironic title. One used wow. to jeer about KT and poke fun at them. This SKT lineup was dubbed the dream team, and when they lost games in Kespa Cup, people used that against them. They lost a dumb one in two out of three series, and yet, here we are, and suddenly, the dream team has finally ascended, or at least is one step away three match points away from ascending. Griffin have been able to reverse sweep before, but on this night, with how game one and two was gone, if you're a betting man and bet on it, be ready to lose the money. Yep, and now side selection will go over to uh, Griffin, so theoretically they should have a little bit more of an opportunity to get themselves back into this one, but SKT so far have won on both sides of the rim. What's the answer? One of the things I was worried about is what is Grin Griffin's mental fortitude down 0-2 Maybe they're gonna pull out Sonic, Papa. Well, maybe, maybe that's the last answer, but guys, we do have a short break. Griffin are gonna have to pull something out of a hat. So many magic references so far here today, but we know all of us won five games. If we can get to it, we'll do our very best, but you guys have to believe in Griffin to try and pull this one back. Send them your energy. Oh, it's gonna be rough. We'll see whether they can do it after the break. This is for those who 